to call this table my Knights of the Round Table. <laughs> you know, King Arthur and his court, how they had that high idea, that noble cause, that situation where they felt as though they were going to cause society to change in some way, and that they were going to be the enforcers of the moral code and the ethics and the ethos of the dictates of the king, King Arthur that is, and how King Arthur was the epitome of what England believed in and wanted to combat in the name of God against the Druids and the false religions that were rampant within the land, but then also to unify them as one country against all outside invaders. Noble cons, wonderful story, great legend. It also epitomizes in Camelot the failure of Arthur and the reality of all of his high ideals were really not accomplished when you take a look at how the story ends. And that's one thing that we need to realize is that when we look at stories and legends, ideas that we have, you know, concepts or these great ministries we think that we're going to do for the Lord or accomplish in the name of God, we need to look at the end of the ministry from the beginning. We need to look at how it will end so that we know how we'll conduct ourselves through it. Because when you invest your time in something, when you want to see something accomplished in the name of God, you should look for the eternal rewards of it, whether or not it will be something worthwhile to do, or whether it's only temporary. Many people that I know right now are spending buku bucks and time And effort and energy in politics. They get all wound up because this is the four-year cycle for the presidential race. And once again, oh no, the end of the world has come, you know, because quite frankly, they don't have anybody they can pick that they want. They have to settle for second best or third best or at worst, the least likely to be the best. And in this case, I don't know what they're doing because Quite frankly, if I'm going to invest my time, if I'm going to put all my energy, if I'm going to do something for the kingdom of God, I want to get some kind of return on my investment. I want to look at eternal rewards as opposed to temporary satisfaction. You see, a lot of people are living in this land. They think that somehow they're going to cause change. They're going to create some kind of cause and effect where there's this tidal wave of people and emotions that are going to change the economy or the social structuring or the behavior of people by politics as opposed to changing the heart. Now for myself, I believe in changing the heart because I think that if the heart of man changes, no matter where he's at, in whatever position of authority he's in, once you change the heart of man, you have him on your side to change all things that he's involved in. So I would say pray for the president and pray for the Congress and pray for those people that are in office and pray that their heart be changed. But I'm in the minority. You see, people want to throw them out or move them around or do things with them and accomplish things in their own strength as opposed to doing it in the Lord. I don't see like super PACs or all this politicking as being anything from God. As a matter of fact, I don't think God is in politics. Quite frankly, I think that he looks at the ways of man and lets man spin his own wheels like little hamsters in a cage. Because I don't see there being the Christian politician. I see the politician failing to be a Christian. And I see many Christians get involved in politics. But unfortunately, the more that I see them do that, the less that I see them share the gospel. And that, I think, is the failure of Christianity today, is that people are seeking to engineer social behavior as opposed to 
trusting in God to change the heart of man. For if we share the gospel, if we declare Jesus and lift him up, then he would draw all men to himself. But unfortunately, we see people separating themselves over politics and, and social behaviors and attitudes and actions. You know, I don't see how you know, a politician appealing to everyone to get a vote can possibly be lifting up Jesus in the name of God and doing the work that God sent him to do. I just don't see it. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had an issue. He had Christians involved in his kingdom, and God decided to humble Nebuchadnezzar. And the way that he did was he made him go out and eat grass for years. And Nebuchadnezzar, as a king over the world, as a ruler of the entire world, wound up, quite frankly, being humbled by the God of the universe. And Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged that. I think we act like Nebuchadnezzar at times. We think we're in charge and that we're in control of the universe that we are involved in, our own little circle. And we create our own little legend about how good we are, our own little band of merry men that we're going to you know, rob from the rich and give to the poor. We're going to you know, be knights of the King Arthur, you know, that we are, and that we are more noble than anyone else around, that we think we're some kind of righteousness. And yet, just like Camelot, when the reality of who we are comes to light, and we stand in the light, we suddenly discover we're not so righteous after all. There's only one righteous. There's only one God. There's only one Savior and one Redeemer. There's only one man that can change the heart of man, and that's Jesus Christ. So whenever you see all these ideas that are floating around that want to occupy your time, and get you involved in every other thing except sharing Jesus. Remember this. That may be good for six months, two months, one week. Your current time of getting excited about politics for four years. But it's always going to keep going in a circle. You're going to keep running around the circle like a hamster on a cage. But if you invest your time wisely, if you choose to lift up Jesus, if you look at him and choose to use your time wisely, then you will receive not just satisfaction in this life and abundancy of peace, love, and joy, which is not something that happens in politics. I know no politician that has peace or love or joy. But if you occupy your time here on earth with the cause of Jesus Christ, with the cause of sharing Him and the gospel that He's given us and entrusted us with, it, then you'll find that you have eternal rewards as well as peace, love, and joy. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to affect the politician, the economy, the country, and every other thing because you're willing to lift Jesus up as opposed to being lifted up or puffed up in your own ideas of how to run the country. This election, I'm sure you'll probably still go do what you feel socially conscious, morally righteous, and all your indignations to do. Me, I choose to pray for whoever it is that God would have in store to be leading this country. I choose to pray for the country. I choose to pray that each and every man would come to the realization of Jesus Christ so that God could turn the heart of man towards him, that they would seek him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. But I know that not everyone will do that. So when you go about your way, if you don't go by lifting up Jesus, let me know how that's working out for you. Because me, I'm committing myself unto eternal rewards and not some temporary solution.